Hey do-it-yourselfers, today we're going to talk about oxygen sensors. We're going to quickly cover how they work and operate and then we're going to move on to help a viewer that has asked me a question in the comment section. The viewer is Paul Phillips Fix and the question is, help, I'm in a pickle, working on an 86 ES300 Lexus, bank 1 sensor 1, O2 wire connector, broken on the chassis harness side, can't find any diagrams that match my colors, please help if you have access to the info, I've tried forums and have been over internet, can't find it, blah 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 blah, Paul, PS, great videos, well good save at the end there Paul, because without that PS part I wasn't going to answer your question, yeah planning on running for president soon, going to have to work on my ego, alright Paul, the good news is you don't need a wiring diagram to figure out which wire goes where on an O2 sensor, However, you do need to know how an O2 sensor works and operates. All right, so on a four-cylinder engine, you're gonna have usually two O2 sensors, one pre-cat O2 sensor. That will be this sensor right here. Again, coming from the engine, it's gonna be the first O2 sensor before you get to your catalytic converter. And then, you're gonna have another O2 sensor further down past your catalytic converter. Now, the job of your bank one sensor one or your pre-cat O2 sensor is to sense the amount of oxygen in your exhaust fumes and then depending on whether you have too much oxygen or too little oxygen in your exhaust fumes, your car's computer is going to regulate the amount of fuel entering your engine by the way of your fuel injectors. Now your oxygen sensor is a voltage producing sensor. Uh, it produces voltage on its own and it basically measures the difference between the amount of oxygen molecules normally in the atmosphere through this, these little holes on the side that you see here relative to the amount of oxygen molecules coming out of your engine through your exhaust gases. The greater the difference the higher the voltage being produced at your oxygen sensor and obviously the lesser the difference the lower the voltage and that's where the whiteboard comes in for a minute and we're going to start from the beginning where well, we used to have only one wire oxygen sensors and that wire was the signal wire sending the amount of voltage being produced at the oxygen sensor back to your car's computer now your oxygen sensor on a one wire setup would get its ground through your engine your engine obviously is grounded uh, by way of a cable that's connected to your chassis and your chassis obviously is grounded by way of another cable wire that's connected to the negative side of your car's battery. And this is how the circuit would be complete on a one wire oxygen sensor. But then after a while engineers realized, hey, for a more reliable ground for these sensors, why don't we provide these sensors with their own ground? So they did, giving these sensors their own ground wire and that's when you started seeing two wire oxygen sensors. But then they decided to add even more wires to these sensors. Why you may ask? Well, oxygen sensors don't start producing voltage until they're properly warmed up. And that usually means about getting to 600 degrees Fahrenheit. Now they're usually warmed up by the way of your exhaust fumes, but in order to speed that process up, engineers decided to add a heating element into these oxygen sensors. And that resulted in the four wire oxygen sensors. See the heating element inside your oxygen sensor? We require its own ground wire and its own positive wire coming from your junction box supplying it with battery voltage. Now there are obviously three wire heated oxygen sensors as well and on those sensors you would only have one ground wire. You would still have one uh, wire carrying current to the heating element and then the other wire carrying the, being the signal wire carrying voltage back to your car's computer. Now before we go any further and as always do me a huge favor and subscribe to my channel and also click on that bell notification so that you're notified of my new videos that will be coming out. Alright now let's get on to helping our friend Paul. Alright so on Paul's car he basically has his O2 sensor with the connector for his O2 sensor. He's got the four pin connector and then on the harness side he doesn't have this connector. He has broken off apparently and his, let's say just basically has four wires hanging out. So first we'll start on the O2 sensor side. So out of these four pins or these four wires, two of them are going to be going to his heating element inside his O2 sensor. And we can find out which ones by using our multimeter. We'll turn it on and set our dial to ohms. And we're going to measure resistance between, the, between all the different ones until we find two that have an actual resistance. And you can only get resistance out of this uh, O2 sensor between only two of these pins. No other combination will give you a resistance. Or I should say resistance that would resemble a resistance you would get from an O2 sensor. And basically we put one probe on one pin and then we'll move the other probe around until we get a reading. And there we got 10.5 ohms of resistance. And then we'll just make sure we'll follow those two pins back. And on this sensor, this white and purple wire is gonna be for our heating element. So what that would mean is that the other two wires on this O2 sensor, this black and gray one, are going to be our ground 
and our signal wire for our O2 sensor. 90 plus percent of the time, since this black one up, is up top here, the ground wire, the one across it in this case, this purple one is gonna be the ground wire for our heating element. All right, so for the engine harness side, we're gonna grab our test light and find the wire that's gonna be carrying power for our heating element. You can use your multimeter as well to check for voltage. However, if you use a test light, you also ensure that that wire is in good condition and that it can carry current. The next you'll need to grind your test light, then get in your car and put the key in the ignition and turn it to the on position. So key on, engine off. On some applications, you may have to turn the engine on as well. But first we'll try it this way. And again, we'll go around looking for the pin that turns on our test light. There, we got it. It's gonna be the lower one on the left, which is going to be this wire back here to me, it looks like yellow and black. All right, so we got three wires left that we need to figure out. It's gonna be two ground wires and one signal wire. Now the two ground wires, one of them is gonna be constant, which means you'll have ground at that wire all the time. The other one is gonna be uh, the switch side for your heating element. That means that your car's computer will supply ground to that wire only when you, know, you start your car from a cold start in order to heat up your oxygen sensor uh, faster. All right, so let's figure out our constant ground first, which again is for the sensor side of our oxygen sensor. So we'll, we'll uh, switch over our test light to the power side on our battery. We'll go around the three remaining wires and there we found our constant ground, which is this white wire across from that yellow and black wire up here. So this one we'll put down as, as our constant ground, which is the ground for our, the sensing side of our heated oxygen sensor. Now obviously one would suspect this wire up here to be the, the ground wire for the heating element. In other, in other words, the switch side of the heating element in this oxygen sensor. But in order to verify that, we'll keep our test light to the positive side of the battery and turn on the engine. All right, good thing we, we verified. It's the other pin. It's the one on the bottom. So now we were able to identify three wires out of the four wires on the harness side. The last remaining one would have to be the signal wire. Easy peasy booby squeezy. See folks, all you have to do is to use the noggin. Again, if you like this video, make sure you subscribe, click on that bell notification. And if you want to support me even further, come and support me on my Patreon page. Link down below right here somewhere. Also click on my other videos if you want to watch more videos like this. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.